Most teams think signups equal success. And while that's partially true, signups don't equal growth unless users activate and start using your product. In this video, we'll break down the five golden rules of onboarding emails so you stop losing users before they convert and start turning more signups into paying customers. Plus, I'll share a simple framework for building an onboarding journey that you can implement right away. Hello, and welcome to MailTrap videos, where we explore the world of emails. Rule one is centered on speed and clarity, because we all know if the first email flops, then so does the engagement. Most teams treat the first touchpoint after sign up as a formality, a quick welcome aboard before diving into product updates. But here's the truth. In SaaS, that first email isn't just a greeting. It's a decision point where users either take their next step or they lose interest. And if it doesn't land fast, clear, and relevant, you've already lost your best chance to make recipients engage. So what should this initial email actually do? First, you need to make sure it lands while the intent is still fresh, as teams who send their first email within 60 seconds often see a 35 to 40% higher activation rate. To achieve this, you'll most certainly need to rely on a transactional email API or a real-time webhook tied directly to the signup instead of a campaign scheduler. Also, to keep things lightning fast, you'll have to remove any templates or tracking scripts that are tied to your emails, as these could delay delivery. Second, make it crystal clear what stage the recipient is in and use content to confirm it. Your trial is live, your account's ready, your workspace is created, or something along those lines will do fine. Then, guide the recipient to the next logical step, not just by linking it, but by giving a simple, clear instruction. For example, click below to log in and finish setup, or start by creating your first project. It only takes two minutes. And third, reinforce your core value proposition, or in other words, the problem you're solving and the outcome to expect. So if you're a project management platform, you can add something like track every deadline in one place so your team never misses another launch. To illustrate the difference, let's look at examples of both a weak and a well-crafted onboarding email. Welcome to Taskflow. Explore our blog, check pricing, or join our community. An email like this offers too many choices, no clear direction, and no reminder of why a user signed up. Instead of this, a version you want to go for should have one message, one action, and one immediate payoff, like, for example, your trial is live. Create your first project now to see all of your team's tasks in one place. With this kind of clarity, you make it easy for users to take the next step. And that's exactly where activation begins. Next. A rule that separates great onboarding sequences from average ones. Time emails by behavior, not by calendar. Most teams love neat little sequences. Day one, welcome. Day three, explore the feature. Day five, invite your team. And sure, this might look clean in your email service provider dashboard, but here's the problem. Your users don't move on your schedule. Some sign up and dive in immediately. Others take a few days to even log back in. So when a day three email lands saying, try this feature before they've even seen the dashboard, it feels out of touch. And as you would expect, users ignore emails that don't match where they are in the journey. That's why behavior-based triggers outperform calendar-based ones every time. And it's been proven by companies like AppQs, who boosted activation two and a half times after redesigning their onboarding to trigger messages based on user behavior rather than static timelines. Quite a jump if you ask me. So. What does implementing those triggers look like in practice? First, you need to connect your email system to a product analytics tool like Segment, Mixpanel, or Amplitude. Also, you need to make sure to use in-app events such as first login, project created, or no activity three days as triggers. This way, your messages can react to real user actions, not educated guesses. Second, match each email to the user's current context by using a pattern similar to this. First login, send a quick start guide. First project created, suggest the next key feature. No activity after three days, send a gentle nudge. Milestone reached, celebrate progress and show the next step. And third, track activation per trigger. So for this example, measure how many users create a project after a first login email. With this type of onboarding, you achieve a personal and timely approach, which keeps users engaged and moving forward. And as users complete one key action after another, they naturally advance toward a full activation and ultimately conversion. Now here's a rule that most teams overlook, and it entails focusing every onboarding email on one clear action. 
We've all seen onboarding language like this before. Invite your teammates, import your data, try automations, all crammed into one message. And while it might feel efficient to cover more ground in one send, in reality, it's one of the sloppiest approaches SaaS teams take. Why? Well, multiple CTAs don't just split attention, they paralyze action. To put it in numbers, Campaign Monitor states that email with a single CTA receive 371% more clicks compared to those with multiple calls to action. That's why every onboarding email should focus on clear activation milestones, a single step that brings users closer to their first moment of value. Think anything ranging from uploading their first file or triggering their first workflow to connecting a key integration or inviting a teammate to collaborate. What does that look like in practice? Let's take an example from a typical onboarding flow. Invite your teammates, upload your data, and try automations. It sounds helpful, but with no single next step, most people do nothing. Now, compare that with this version. Start by inviting your team. Collaboration unlocks your first project. It's obvious what to do next and why it matters. And that's exactly what drives action. By guiding users towards one meaningful action at a time, you remove decision friction and you build steady forward momentum. From there, as users see your product solving real pain points, conversion becomes a natural next step. Think your job's done after setup? Not quite. The next rule we cover is all about keeping users engaged with ongoing wins, aka success loops. Have you made this communication mistake in your onboarding sequences? Account created, checklist complete, and then silence. A strategy like this is a classic example of an onboarding journey that stops the moment setup is done. In theory, this looks fine, but in real-life scenarios, it's a crucial error that prevents you from creating loyal users. In fact, SaaS platforms that stop communicating after setup lose up to 30% of users before the first renewal cycle. This is the exact reason why the smartest teams build sequences sprinkled with success loops, small, continuous reinforcements that show progress and value in action. A success loop can take different forms, but some common ones you'll see typically go along the lines of, you've completed setup, great job. You save three hours this week by using automations. Teams like yours grow two times faster with this feature. They tell users you're doing it right. You're seeing results. Keep going. And that's where the conversion magic happens. Let's put that into perspective with two onboarding messages. Your account is ready. Setup complete. Technically correct, but emotionally flat. No reminder of value, no reason to come back. And two weeks later, that user's most likely gone cold. Now compare that to this message. You've automated three tasks this week, saving two hours already. Next, connected integrations to scale even faster. This version gives users a reason to stay engaged instead of checking out after setup. And that's the difference between an onboarding flow that fades out and one that keeps users moving towards activation. As the last rule, we have a simple one. Onboarding works best when everyone's in sync. Like other stages of the SaaS customer journey, onboarding is a cross-functional mission and for a few key reasons. If marketing builds the flow alone, it might look polished, but it also might miss product timing. If product owns it, it might be precise, but lack warmth and clarity. If customer success runs it, it might feel human, but it will fail to scale. So in a nutshell, great onboarding happens when all these teams operate from the same activation map. And here's how your team could handle that task. Start by mapping out your key activation milestones, like first login, first prospect created, or integration connected. Then, assign clear owners for each touchpoint. Who writes the message, who triggers it, and who monitors what happens next. From there, marketing sets the tone and expectations before and after signup. Product triggers messages based on real behavior, and customer success steps in where friction appears. Just don't forget to sync weekly across teams to review user progress and fix friction fast. This way, no matter who presses send, the user gets one unified experience. Okay, now that we've covered the five golden rules of onboarding emails, it's time we talk about building a foolproof onboarding journey. But before jumping into that, just a quick reminder to click that subscribe button so you don't miss other useful videos like this one. Step one, identify the activation moment and friction points. Before drafting any onboarding emails, map the key moments when users first see value and the points where they mostly drop off. For your product, an activation moment might be sending a campaign, completing a setup, or inviting teammates. Then, dig into your data to find drop-off points. 
Do most users sign up but never log in? Do they start setting up but never finish? Or do they maybe trigger a feature but never return? A good tip is to also analyze cohorts of users who upgraded within 14 days and look for the common actions that they took first. This way, you can find your aha moment and your entire onboarding flow can lead there. Step two, build a guided flow that bridges each milestone. Once you've mapped the key milestones and drop-offs, it's time to turn them into a structured flow. Think of it like GPS navigation. Your users know the destination and your onboarding tells them the next turn. Here, each message should answer one simple question. What's the next most valuable step this user can take right now? And also, give each milestone its own trigger, email, and goal. As a result, the journey will feel clear, sequential, and easy to follow. For building your automated onboarding journeys, you'll of course need a reliable tool, such as MailTrap. With MailTrap, you get the easiest automation building process, from setting up triggers and actions to applying rules that even first-time users can handle without any training. And since it covers a range of automation cases besides onboarding, like welcome series, segment-driven campaigns, and event-triggered follow-ups, the platform will come in handy for other core lifecycle campaigns as well. Step 3. Sync emails with the in-app experience. In your onboarding flow, your users shouldn't feel like they're getting duplicate instructions. Instead, they should feel guided from all sides. So if your app already uses checklists, tooltips, or guided tours, your email shouldn't repeat every click. Instead, it should explain why that step matters. For example, if the tooltip says set up billing, your email should say set up billing now to unlock analytics and avoid service interruptions. This type of alignment builds trust by allowing the product to drive action and the email to drive motivation. Step 4. Build adaptability, not just automation. Even in the perfect flow, not every user follows the same path. So instead of a rigid sequence, build adaptive logic into your onboarding. That means fast movers skip the beginner steps that they've already completed and stalled users receive nudges or help from support. When it comes to different roles, like admins and users and execs, they should all get messages tailored to their own goals. This kind of personalization keeps every message timely, relevant, and useful, not generic or repetitive. Because onboarding isn't about sending more emails, it's about sending the right email at the right time so every user keeps progressing toward activation. Step 5. Measure success by business impact. Even when your onboarding system is live and running, the job isn't done yet. And no, you shouldn't waste time looking just at vanity metrics like open rates and clicks. Instead, track how your users move through the journey, who reaches value, who upgrades, and who sticks around. Activation rates will tell you how many users reach their first value moment. Trial to paid conversion will be your ultimate ROI signal. And retention at 30 or 60 days will determine whether early engagement leads to loyalty. Every email, every milestone, every adjustment should move one of these metrics. When it does, you'll know your onboarding flow is doing its job. Onboarding is the make or break stage for conversion. Get it right and signups turn into loyal customers. Get it wrong and your acquisition spend goes to waste. Luckily, with the right approach and the rules outlined, onboarding can become one of your strongest growth levers. But remember, no flow, no matter how well designed, works if your emails end up in spam. That is why we recommend checking out our dedicated video on email deliverability. The link to it should be right here on the screen. I'll see you there. What does that look like in practice? I don't know. Let's take an example from a specific onboarding flow. I do know. I can't say I don't know. <laughs> uh, funny, but true.